Well, good morning, good friends of YouTube, or afternoon, or evening, or night, or whatever time you happen to be watching this. Thought it was about time we made some videos again. So, welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, as for the magnetic amplifier that amplifies audio, I haven't had any success with that yet. I really need to find a good pair of matching transformers. Now, I thought these two that came out of a computer power supply would be good, but they're not closely matched enough. The closest matching transformers I have are these two mains transformers. And although they did work at the high frequencies, which I didn't think they would, but they do, at those frequencies, even though at low frequencies they're quite evenly matched, at high frequencies they're not which is just as I expected, so that idea is kind of out the window. I mean, I wired them up so the primaries are both in parallel and the high voltage secondaries are in series but connected in opposite phase to each other, so they should have cancelled each other out and I was getting about 80 volts or so. So that's that idea stopped right away. I mean, on their own, um, this boosted 12 volts to over 500 volts peak to peak on its own and it rounded out the square wave into a nice sine wave. Anyway, back to this. So, gonna be mucking about with whatever this circuit is. Phase shift oscillators. Now, in the past I've tried to build one of these circuits and they've never worked, but maybe this time I'll get lucky. And if it does, well, you'll be seeing this go up on YouTube. So what we've got here is the signal comes out of the transistor, then into this network of capacitors and resistors, and then into the transistor's base. But because it's going through this network of capacitors and resistors, there's a slight delay between what comes out here and what goes in there, so it starts oscillating. And because the output is slightly out of phase with the input, that's where the name comes from, and it will continue to oscillate, and the frequency is determined by whatever capacitors and resistors I use here. So I'm just going to pull out some random capacitors, make sure they're all the same, so say 3 10 nanofarad capacitors here and maybe a couple of 10k resistors there. Just depends on what I come to first, so let's see what we get. Right, so we need some resistors. I found a couple of 15k resistors, which are making a bid for freedom. Found some 10 nanofarad capacitors, one with its legs spread out, so that's going to come in handy. Blech. Excuse me. Blech. Excuse me again. And the other parts. So, it's time to build up the circuit and see if it works. Okay, I've built the circuit. And I've got it hooked up to my oscilloscope, and what do you know? It works. It's oscillating at about 411 hertz. It's a little bit uh, at the bottom there, but I think we can iron that out. So yeah, this is about one of the first time I've built a circuit, and this actually worked. Let's see if adjusting the voltage changes the frequency. No, it doesn't, so that's quite stable. Right then, well, um, let's see what we can do about the bottom of that waveform. So yeah, I think we've got a little bit too much feedback here. And this transistor is being driven into saturation, so... I've added this potentiometer in the circuit, so we can adjust the amount of feedback. And hopefully that should take care of the distortion, so let's see if I'm right. Turn the power on, nothing's happened so far, but I've got this turned down all the way. At some point, it should start oscillating as I turn this up. It shouldn't affect the frequency too much, but it will affect the frequency a little bit. That is, if it just actually starts to oscillate. There we go. We've got our oscillation there. And let's back that off and let's see if we can get that looking nice and. Yeah, we has a nice sine wave. 
I'm going to see if I can adjust the frequency now. So I'm going to put in another potentiometer. So I've got a 47k here. And I'll just stick that in. It's got a little bit of solder on it, so it's not going to stick in there very well, but should be good enough for this experiment. And I'm going to replace this resistor here with this potentiometer. And so I've basically replaced this resistor with this potentiometer, so I'm going to pull out the resistor there. And the oscillation stops. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit until we get an oscillation back. Which isn't happening because I've put this wire in the wrong place. I think it would work a lot better if I actually put it in the holes where the resistor was. Ah, there we go. So I should be able to adjust the frequency. Yeah, we can do a pretty rough frequency tuning. Right, so let's see what happens if I replace this resistor with that potentiometer. So I'll take that out there. Put this resistor back in. Now let's take this resistor out. And stick that in there. See what this gives us. That's about the same. We lose our oscillation if we go up any further, but if I increase the feedback. There we go, let's just put it on all the way. So we've got our distorted waveform again, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I would say that's working pretty well. So I can go up to about 980 kilohertz. I mean, about 985 hertz, and down to about... Well, it's still going. Right down to about 290 hertz. And let's adjust our feedback. Make that nice and round. And my dinner is ready, so I'd better go. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a one kilohertz oscillator. I've changed all three capacitors to 1.5 nanofarads. And now if we turn the feedback up all the way help if I was turning it the right way. We now get a range from 1.28 kilohertz to about... I'll just find out where it cuts off. To almost 4 kilohertz. So it's a little bit outside the range of where I want it, but we're getting there. So I'm going to need to play around with the capacitors and the resistors until I get the range that I want. Then I've got something that I can test audio amplifiers with. Speaking of audio amplifiers, and no, I'm not going to advertise something here. I know people like Linus Tech Tips are always advertising stuff in their videos. Well, I don't do that in these videos. Actually, let's just turn the feedback down so we get a nice, clean sine wave. But yeah, speaking of amplifiers, so I want to connect this microphone to my computer's microphone in. Now I know what you're saying. Why don't I just take this microphone here, make a cable with an XLR on one end and a 3.5mm jack on the other end, connect those together and use that to connect the microphone to the computer's microphone input. Well, I could do that and it would work, but it wouldn't work very well. And here's why. You see, this is a dynamic microphone. And computer sound cards are designed for microphones like this, which use a condenser microphone, which is this little tiny thing here. It's absolutely tiny. And these generally give out more signal than one of these. So if I connect this microphone up to my computer sound card, it will work, but it won't be very loud. Also, another thing with these condenser microphones is they require power, whereas dynamic microphones don't. So the computer is going to put a small voltage on the same wire where the signal comes out in order to power up the microphone. So the DC voltage that's coming out of my computer's microphone input is 2.2 volts. 
that's it. Connecting a dynamic microphone to the computer's microphone input won't damage the microphone or the computer because that voltage is current limited. So as soon as I plug in this microphone, the resistance of the coil is going to pull that voltage down to practically nothing. And the microphone will be just fine with that. Even though you'll hear a little bit of a crackling noise come from the microphone itself, it'll be fine with that, and it won't damage it. It won't hurt the computer either because, like I said, it's current limited. I could completely short the microphone input and it will take that all day. It won't damage the computer, it won't damage the microphone, so let's do this. Okay, so I've got the microphone and I'm holding it right up close to the camera's microphone. And I'm going to connect and disconnect the XLR connection. And you might be able to hear as I do that. You might be able to hear a little bit of clicking coming from the microphone itself. That's because dynamic microphones work in the same way as a speaker. The only difference being a microphone is optimized to pick up sound, whereas a speaker is optimized to reproduce it. Okay, so I have my microphone plugged directly into the computer's microphone input, and I have Audacity recording this, as you can see, and I'm going to splice in the audio that Audacity recorded when I come to edit this video. But you might have noticed that I've had to turn the microphone boost up onto its full 30 decibels, and also I've had to turn the microphone's level all the way up in order to get a decent level recording. So yeah, that actually worked pretty well. I'm actually surprised at how well it worked because in the past I've tried that and nothing short of screaming into the microphone with all the levels set as far as that will go produced any form of audible recording. So even though this time it actually worked pretty well, I still had to have all the levels turned all the way up and speak right up close to the microphone. So, let's see if we can do something about this. This is the circuit that I have in mind. It's just a simple one transistor amplifier, and as you can see there's almost nothing to it. We have transistor, a resistor, a capacitor, and that's about it. But the more observant of you might have noticed that there is a little something missing. Where's the power supply? Where do we connect the power? Well, we don't need to. Normally what you would have is you would have, you know, you'd have a resistor here and that would go off to your power and um, you put a capacitor here and there you go, one transistor class A amplifier. The thing is, inside the computer, this resistor and this capacitor is built into the sound card, so we don't need this part and that part. And when I plug this in, it's going to complete the circuit, so let's see how well this works. In fact, I'm so confident this is going to work, I've already gone ahead and built it. So this is where it's going to connect to the computer. You can see we've got one lead going to the transistor's collector and the other lead going to the transistor's emitter. And there's our 2.2 mega ohm resistor to bias the transistor. A capacitor to stop any DC getting into the microphone and throwing off the bias. So, I think it's about time to connect this up to the computer and see how well it works. Okay, so here we are with the microphone preamp connected up to the computer. Now, you might have noticed that I'm talking much further away from the microphone than I was before, and the microphone boost is only on 20 dB this time, so as you can probably tell, it works quite well. Anyway, like Techmoan would say, that's it for the moment. So, until next time, Goodbye. I want to connect a dynamic microphone to my computer's microphone input. And I know what you're saying. Well, the microphone is trying to run away. Clean sine wave. But yeah, speaking of amplifiers, no, I'm not going to advertise something. In fact, I think it was recording a little bit too loud, but still. And as you can probably see, I have Audacity recording this, and when I edit the video, I'm going to splice in the, the audio that Audacity recorded, and I'm going to write this with my head. Also, as you can probably see, I have the microphone. I don't know why I'm pointing to that, because you're not going to be able to see what I'm pointing to, but 
yeah, just bear in mind. So, starting a gorn. So I can do the recording. I'm going to burp. I need to burp. It's coming. Uh.